Hello everybody! Welcome to my next video! We are almost through 2020. It is December and we are festive here in the house. Ah, Bruce of course is coming to say hello and he's got his little Christmas sweater on. Say hi! Can I have a kiss? He does not give kisses. He plays hard to get. He has since I met him. That's fine. So today's video, I'm just recapping again a bit of 2020. Lots has happened and I've touched on a couple of the big things in recent videos. So now we're just going to be a little bit more, I was going to say personal, but those other videos are quite personal, but I would just say more of what I've been doing on the ongoings, the dailies of living in a global pandemic that's been going on for a long, long time. Okay, so it's nearing the holidays. I'm not sure how many of you out there celebrate the holidays or what kind of holidays you celebrate. I'm not a big holiday person really. I don't put too much emphasis on it myself, but I do acknowledge that this is a tough time for so many people. Personally, my family, none of us are getting together right now. I happen to have a very large immediate family, just the very, immediate brothers, sisters, parents is already about 14 people, including my nephews. So my heart definitely goes out to all of you that can't see your loved ones right now, people that are worried about their loved ones. The holidays I feel in general are stressful enough, but to have this going on as well, you know, it just amplifies it. But let's rewind a bit first and chat a bit about what's gone on up until this point. So me and Jeremy met very, very shortly before the first lockdown that happened in March. And we decided to do the lockdown together. I was sent home from my office job in March as soon as everything went down and I have not gone back to work in an office since then. So that was a bit of an adjustment. And um, at the time, I was staying with Jeremy and Bruce and Jeremy's roommate. We were all in lockdown together. So that was a big adjustment for me because a lot of my days in my life <laughs> have been built around having to go to an office. So I would get my exercise from um, commuting to work. I would walk to work every day, walk home from work. I we go to the gym, which was located near my office, um, either on my lunch or after work. And I would do a lot of my errands and running around based on when I was coming to and from work. So that was a big change. And when I was sent home, I had also recently quit the gym that I was going to. I used to do CrossFit here in Vancouver. Coincidentally, the world shut down, my gym shut down. And I'm sure many of you can relate that when the world shut down, I didn't necessarily take that opportunity to just be the most productive human I've ever been in my life. And I feel like that was a trend ongoing for the first six months of this year that we were all supposed to just start working on things that we've never worked on in our entire lives because now we had all this free time and we're supposed to, you know, learn a new instrument, start a new hobby, start baking fresh bread and sewing our own clothes, churning our own butter. But I can tell you that for probably the first two months, because of the trauma and the unknown of a global pandemic, I completely shut down mentally <laughs> for a good amount of time. I wasn't fully aware, but I was definitely experiencing some depression and anxiety, and I just had no motivation whatsoever to do anything. Also, I was so scared. Everyone, I'm sure, was very fearful at the beginning of going outside, um, afraid of spreading this virus, afraid of catching this virus. Just un There's just so much uncertainty surrounding what we were supposed to be doing, not doing. Is very confusing so yeah I'm gonna take this I'm gonna take this hat off so I wasn't working out I was 
I was maybe walking the dog, going for walks and things like that, but it was still spring here in Vancouver. It was rainy, it was cold, it was miserable. And we all just kind of hunkered down. So some things that I did at the beginning was I just kept on working from home, which did give me some distraction, which I appreciated. And then I also, we started watching a lot of movies. There's many movies that I hadn't seen because I just never put a focus on watching movies. I just wanted to do other things with my time, but this was a prime opportunity. So we watched all the Star Wars movies, all the James Bond movies, um, all the Austin Powers movies. We watched Wayne's World again. We, what other ones did we watch? I watched all of Breaking Bad, which I'd never seen before. We've watched tons of Seinfeld. We, I just, you know, Tiger King. I mean, we were all kind of in the same boat there. So that was my first two months. I felt pretty bad about myself because the, I had started practicing guitar um, at the end of 2019. I got one for Christmas. I was really excited about it. All of January is probably picking up, it up once a day. And as soon as this happened, I didn't touch it for probably two months. And then I beat myself up about losing the calluses on my fingers and not you know, taking all that time I had on my hands to like progress with my instrument. And that was, I just feel like we were all going through that of, oh, we have all this time on our hands. We should become better people. And instead we just com fell apart completely. So what I did for me time throughout that time and ongoing now is I definitely go for walks. I do walk Bruce, but sometimes I walk alone. Sometimes that's when I'll make phone calls to family members or FaceTime. I, it took me a good, six months, I would say the middle of summer, to start forgiving myself for not, you know, being a superhero during this time. I just started being like, hey, pick up the guitar whenever you want to. And it's okay if it's not even once this year. We're going through a pretty intense experience and it's okay if that's not something you want to do right now. Also, I didn't wear proper clothing probably for six months. I wore pajamas all the time. I wouldn't shower in the mornings. I would just get up in my pajamas, start working, and then all of a sudden it'd be five o'clock and then I'd be like, oh, I should have a shower, I guess. And then I just put on my pajamas for the next, for that night. And that was, you know, it's just, that's all stuff that just adds up to not feeling very good about yourself, not feeling like you're a participant in life. And so finally, like 10 months later, I have realized that it's important to shower in the morning, put clothes on. And here's the other question that some of you asked was about my fitness and working out and all that sort of thing. So after I got over the slump of doing nothing, which I think a lot of us went through, uh, I do create online monthly fit camps where I create programs for people online and we do them all together and I coach people that way and they're super fun and, and I redesigned my program starting after the lockdown so that it could be all done at home. But I have to admit it took me a while to even start doing it myself. I've never been someone who works out at home. I've always gone to a gym. It's just been more motivating for me that way. And so it took a while, but over the months, I just started making myself get up, put on my workout clothes, put on some music, pull out the, the workout equipment that I have, which is just like a couple of dumbbells, put out my yoga mat and just make myself do it and be accountable. And actually the, the online monthly fit camps that I do, they're generally four weeks long. I've made a habit of filming myself working out and then I'll post it to my Instagram. So if you follow my Instagram, you'll see that. And that's just kept me accountable and motivated. And obviously anytime you ever work out afterwards, you feel glad that you did it. It helps with the anxiety. It helps with, you know, all the stress. And it also just makes you, it pumps up your endorphins and it just, it helps you feel like you can kind of take on whatever the rest of the day is going to hand over to you. So, I've tried to keep that in the back of my mind. And honestly, in the last like three months or so is when I've been the most diligent about working out in the mornings at home and creating that habit. And it's been wonderful. Over the summer, I definitely was into running outside, biking outside and getting as much vitamin D as I could outdoors. But now with the winter in Vancouver, we're kind of back inside again. So I'm making the best of it right now. 
I also want to say that I did seek counseling over March, April, and May of this year. Although I would like to say that I could just coast through all of that, I definitely wasn't doing a very good job. And I think an important part of quarantining with other people, whether it's family, relationships, partners, or roommates, etc., is you kind of have to be at least trying to be your best self mentally so that you can share that space with other people and it feels like a, you can contribute to it feeling like a, a positive safe space. Nobody's perfect, everyone's gonna have their bad days, but I definitely was realizing I was struggling and I didn't want to put that on to anybody else. So I did seek some counseling for a few months until I felt like I was in a place where I could handle it better on my own. So being in a new relationship throughout this, I mean, the <laughs> I know that I've heard that a lot of people have been struggling in relationships and that's, you know, this is such a stressful time. And if you're not, if you haven't worked on putting in proper coping methods for your own stress, that's the first step towards, you know, going into a very bad place in a relationship is when you start putting the responsibility of your emotions and your and your stress and all that onto another person when it needs to be something that you work on and can take care of on your own. And again, like we all have bad days where you have an outburst or something like that, but at the end of the day, it's so important that you are accountable to figure out how to manage on your own without leaning too hard on someone else. It's like a push and pull. You can definitely have those days where one leans on the other and vice versa, but it's, it has to be reciprocal and that you have to be strong enough at times to also be there for that other person. I would hope, and this is one thing I would want to, you know, encourage anybody out there who's struggling right now with everything going on is to reach out in some way to someone to help you through it and give you some advice, whether it is a counselor, a therapist, a life coach, a friend, a family member. The first step is acknowledging that you're struggling. And then the next steps, of course, are how to help you cope, manage, and get through. And if you, if you work on yourself in that way, all your other relationships will be easier. So I've, thought in my head about you know how have me and my new relationship Jeremy how have we managed to fall in love <laughs> fall in love in lockdown and I would say part of it is having what 20 years of relationship experience under both our belts we're in our 30s we've obviously been in failed relationships until now so from that you learn so much about yourself and what you want in a partner and like how you want to have a relationship in the future and so i am so thankful that i've failed this many times because i've been able to just put out there what I want in a relationship because I know what I want and I also know my flaws well enough that I'm in a place now where I can be humble enough to admit where I struggle and also when I'm wrong. So just, you know, fail a ton in relationships until your 30s and then find someone. Just kidding. Don't do that. But some, I know people that have been together for 20 years and their process is they've just worked together and grown together, which is also such a beautiful thing. And, you know, I think both are wonderful. So I don't know. So I guess my main advice is just to continue to work on yourself and the rest will follow. So I'm just gonna briefly touch on a few things that have really helped me personally cope with quarantine and lockdown as someone who is introvert, who's very shy, who um, is very sensitive, very empathetic. I mean, I cry watching like auditions for The X Factor. That kind of stuff makes me cry. I'm very, very sensitive. So global pandemic and knowing that people are struggling and suffering and it, you know, it's, it, it definitely hits me hard and it's a struggle, you know, daily to continue to operate and function knowing these things are going on in the world. So what I've been doing is kind of 
these three things. First, I have been managing my information that comes in through media. I do not have the news channel on all day. I'm not constantly seeking the stats and the mortality rates and things like that because that's out of my control. And I, you know, have adjusted my algorithms on my social media platforms. I've muted a lot of people. I've muted a lot of channels and pages so that I can be more control of what information I'm receiving. Because sometimes you don't realize when you're just scrolling and a lot of us wake up, the very first thing we do in the morning is go on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or YouTube and you're just scrolling through and things are coming at your brain that you, you're absorbing it and you don't even realize. So that is a really important number one thing I've done this year is really started to change and control more of what the information that's coming at me because it does change the way you think and see and feel and your energy about the day. So that is a big one. Number two, um, main thing I've been doing is just forgiving myself for not being a completely new person now because it's been almost a year of this and I haven't learned any new song on the guitar. Some days we order pizza, some days I bake lasagna, some days I have a protein shake and all of it is fine. Any kind of behaviors that maybe I struggle with or I've changed or habits that are, are more difficult for me now or whatever the case may be, I just give myself forgiveness. And I'll just say finally for number three, I've just reevaluated what I prioritize for my mental and physical health. So exercise before was more uh, focused on appearance and like aesthetics and how things fit and how things look. And now I know it's just something I need to do for my mental health, for my anxiety, for me to have a good day. Same with my diet. I'm just making sure I'm eating from all the different food groups. And you know, if some of those food groups include ice cream and candy, sometimes that's fine. Um, it's still a food group and I just need to make sure I have enough of everything so that again, my mental health, so my physical and mental health are in a good place. Laughter is also a big key for me in handling a lot of stuff. I make fun of myself a lot. And thankfully I, I bunkered down with someone who has an incredible sense of humor and doesn't take anything too, too seriously. So we have had a lot of laughs. We watch a lot of comedies. We play a lot of games and we tell a lot of jokes and try and keep it light because that's so, so important too. If you can't laugh, you'll cry. I say that all the time. Sometimes I do just end up crying, but sometimes I'll cry until I start laughing. Maybe I am going a little crazy, but that's fine. I'm, it's fine, we're fine. So I guess I kinda wanna, you know, I think Bruce should say goodbye. He's napping. He's actually for once not awake. Hold on. Bruce. Come here. Bruce obviously has been wonderful. And if you have a pet, you probably understand how lovely it is to have a pet during a lockdown or a pandemic. But I also think it's been good for them too. They like it, you like it? Do you like having? lockdowns we just stay home with you all day wishing you guys all the love even from a distance during this hard time and if you are struggling please reach out to someone <sighs> comment below share your struggle i'm sure so many other people can relate and i feel like that helps everybody the most is when everyone just talks about things that they're struggling with rather than pretending everything's okay this has been a tough year it's a tough year but it's gonna get better and I don't know how to close the video. Do you wanna say goodbye? I'm obsessed with you. Yes, I am. Bye everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Comment below, share your stories. We wanna hear from you and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bruce is the best dog ever. Bruce is the best dog ever.